Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Savior's is a congregation of people forgiven in Christ, whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad you have chosen to worship with us. Our contemporary worship will begin in a few moments. To the place that feels like home To the people I can depend on To the faith that's in my bones Take me back To the preacher and a verse And the team me at my worst To the love I had at first Oh, I want to go to church I want to go to church Go to church. Well, good morning and welcome to worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church. Whether you are joining us here in the room or via the television or uh, Facebook Live, we are glad to be together with all of you today. A wonderful gift indeed. I invite you to join me now in our welcome to worship as we continue with our worship. God, we notice the great need of the world the hunger for peace and friendship, the thirst for stability and hope. But we remember that you love and care for your people. Can we count your good in your good promises? Can we ever know your many mercies? You prepare good things while we sleep. You speak words of hope before we know how to listen. And when we are dying, you give us reason to live again. Open your hands and scatter the world with surprises. Now bless our world, our country, and our city, and our home. Amen. Amen indeed. You know, before we continue with our service, we have a few announcements to share with you. If you are looking for ways to put your faith into action, well then look no further. You can sign up today at the Welcome Center to be part of the next Food to You distribution event at Augustana Lutheran Church, which will happen this Thursday. August 18th. Now we are currently also accepting applications for ministry positions here in our, on our staff in our spiritual care ministry area, spiritual care coordinator and faith community nurse. For more information on that, you can contact Pastor Tim and I would be willing to talk with you and excited to talk with you about those opportunities. Our current, speaking of that, our current faith community nurse, Michelle Anderson, has announced her retirement from nursing after 40 years of service, and we will celebrate uh, Michelle's ministry among us next Sunday, August 21st, from 9.30 to 10.30 in the gathering place with a reception and a card shower. We are really grateful for the ministry time she spent with us, and we want to wish her well. Another way for you to serve is by sharing your financial resources to support two critical outreach ministries. Giving in support of Lutheran disaster response as our church responds to the destructive flooding in Kentucky and or help fund the new cameras and related equipment we recently needed to purchase to ensure that our broadcast ministry can continue to extend our gospel mission to thousands of households every week. For more information on this, uh, this opportunity, I think we have a message from Cambot. Hello, I am OSL Cambot 3. You may remember me. I introduced myself a couple months ago. I am one of the robot cameras at Our Saviors. I love Our Saviors. I love helping you connect your faith to your everyday life. But I needed your help. Normally there are three of us cameras, but my friends died. This is what happens to Cambots. To enjoy further television programming, you need new cameras. I have news worthy of celebration. You have raised over $17,000 to buy new cameras. Good job. I will celebrate with you now. Be 
Because of your good work, we have a new Cambot. I wanted to introduce it to you today. Hello, new Cambot. What is your designation? Hello, I'm Lydia. What is your name? I am OSL Cambot 3. Very catchy. Do you have a nickname? Perhaps Cam? I will try it out. Hi, I am Cam Bot 3. I cannot do it. It makes me feel like my wires are exposed. I am glad you are here, even if you have made me feel uncomfortable. Thanks. I love being here already. Cambot 3, what do you do for fun around here? We look at things. Wonderful. And what do we do for work? We look at things. I'm loving it. Tell me more. Well, every week our people gather here to worship the God who made them. When people worship God in this room, our job is to show what happens so other people who are far away can worship God too. Then we have a very important job. Yes, we do. It is the best job a camera can have. You need to know some things. During the worship time, there are musicians. What are musicians? Musicians are like cambots, but they make music. They are half human, half machine. The machines are called instruments and microphones. They use these machines to make sounds their bodies cannot. This is called music, and people find it interesting. This is why we show what they do. There are also human people who talk a lot. They are called pastors. We must show many angles of their faces so people do not get bored looking at them when they talk for so long. What do the pastors say? Many things, but they almost always talk about God. Occasionally they tell a joke. I never understand the jokes from pastors. Do you understand when they talk about God? Understanding is not our job. Now you have been trained. Point out things so people can worship God. I also want you to meet some of the people you will help. They can see you now. You should say hello. Hi. I'm Lydia. I'm so happy I got to meet you. I'm going to work very hard for you. And I'm going to do my best so you can connect faith to everyday life. I am glad I can learn from someone as experienced as Cambot 3. And I hope I can serve you just as well. Lydia, you have done a very nice job. I like you even though you are new. Thanks, Cambot 3. I like you too, even though you are very old. Cambot 3, are there any other young cameras here? There will be. You will meet them soon. But we still need the help of our human people. I will address the people now so they can know how to help. Human people. Not long ago I watched the terrible storm. It ripped trees apart outside my windows. I wanted to see those trees and now they are gone. I hope your house is okay. I hope your trees did not crush your cameras. Some of our machines died of what you would call a heart attack when the electricity poles blew up outside our windows. Those were scary days. We continue to rebuild. We continue to install more cameras to ensure that you can watch worship in this place. Your gifts still make a difference. Lydia, do you have any more queries before our work continues? We have talked a great deal about God today, and I was wondering, who is God? Where does God live? Does God live in space? Is God electric like we are? Does God like to look at things like we do? Does God have a tongue or a voice quail? What do people do when they aren't worshiping God? What are animals? What is faith? <laughs> We do thank you for your continued generosity as we work on this uh, project. You may use the envelopes found in your respective rows to make your contribution today or in the church office during the week. Thank you for your gifts. Speaking of gifts, we have the gift of our gathering song.
can show you life that is living on the inside, growing like a lion. God's not dead. Show you life that is living on the inside, growing like a lion. Let hope arise and make the darkness hide. Hope so bold, I need a resurrection Someone Let hope arise and break the darkness high Hope so bold, I need a resurrection Someone Now I'm lost in Surely alive and he's living on the inside Today, friends, we give thanks for our baptism, where God filters the promise of salvation through water and the word. We pour out this water to cool hot tempers and wash away stinging wounds, to refresh tired eyes and remove galling grievances. We pour out this water as we remember God's rescue of Noah from the flood, Israel from slavery, and humanity from captivity to evil. We pour out this water as we pray. God, you combine this humble water with your holy word to create a solution for our sin. This water cleans what we have made filthy. This water dissolves the guilt that clings to our soul. This water activates new possibilities for the people who wait for you. Thank you for our baptism where you remove our contamination and you charge us with the purpose of your love. At this time, we have uh, Kid Talk Cove is going to get filled up. Anybody who's going to participate in Kid Talk, come on up. And you don't have to be 12 or under. You can be older if you want. And let your light shine. Oh 
kids together with all of us here let's pray jesus when we truly hear what you teach we struggle to accept it on one hand it's good news for a broken world on the other hand it creates division when the sin we within us prevents us from accepting and living by the whole of your teaching forgive us and be patient with us and give us courage to live as your people in your name we pray amen Good morning, kids. It's so good to see you this morning. I, I have a wonderful opportunity for you to help me in just a couple of minutes to bless these wonderful little gifts up here, which I'll tell you more about them in just a moment. Gifts. There's another word for gifts, and it's called offering. You know what offering means? What, what is an offering? It means like you're offering something, like a piece of candy. That is true. What does offering mean? Like see if they want to give something. See what? See if they want to give something that you want to give. Seeing if they want to do something together with you? Yes, yes, an offering. That's right, an offering. It's a bigger word than gift, but it's actually something that we're going to do in just a few minutes that we do every time in worship. You remember when I say it's time for our offering? What do you guys usually do? That's right, you help collect coins. That's right, you help with noisy offering. Offering is our gift. What? Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Offering is our gift to God and to others. An offering is giving something you have to someone else to make their world better, Right? When you do noisy offering, that's coins. Coins go to help with the Hawthorne Milk Project. That's helping somebody else, right? Giving them something that we have so that they can have something they need too. When the uh, rest of us put offering in the offering plates, that offering goes to help make this ministry possible that we share here together, have this place, all the people who work here, and all of the things that we do together in ministry. It's everybody together giving what they have to make it work. An offering is giving something you have to somebody else. That's the easiest way to say it. Giving something you have to somebody else for a reason, not just to do it, but for a reason, to make life better for them, to help them with things that they need, to help them feel God's love in a special way by knowing that somebody else helped us out. Okay? Now, we don't only give offering away, we get offering. God gives us offerings, too. God gives us offerings of love. God gives us offering of hope, offerings of peace and joy in the midst of a world. You see, offering goes both ways. We give and God gives. Isn't that kind of cool? Now, offering is more than just money, though. I want you to be, understand that. Offering is giving things that we have. And that could be other kinds of things, it could be, like you said, Ari, giving candy to somebody who doesn't have candy. Could be giving something, like I'm going to show you here in just a minute, to somebody who needs. But it's giving some things that we have to others because we do it out of love. Not just money, it's things that others need. 
We're going to bless this morning these wonderful things. See, they're pretty, full, pretty and full of color and all that. These are personal hygiene bags that our quilting ladies have made for the women on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. Now, we're going to bless them because it's a wonderful ministry. We want to bless not the, just these, but the ladies who made them and our ministry together. So we bless everything this morning. We're just going to bless everything this morning in a minute, and you're going to help me. But the thing about giving is that we give things that people really need to live each day. And sometimes we take that for granted because we have stuff that we need maybe that we don't even think about during the day. You get up in the morning, do you, you get cleaned up before you go to school? Do you use a bar of soap maybe to clean up? Do you use soap? <laughs> Tell me you use soap. Okay, all right, all right, good, good. Don't worry, all right, all right. When I was a little boy, I had to be talked into it, but I used it. Yep, yep, mom said it needed to be done. Yeah, yeah you know, things that we take for granted each day that we don't even think about having, some people don't. And so when we think about offering, we have to think about giving things that people really need. Today we're going to give these. And I want you to help me out right now. I'm going to stand up. You guys stand up too, okay? And together with the congregation, actually, we're going to do this together. We are going to bless these personal hygiene bags. And we'll do it like this. We'll hold our hands up and kind of go like this when I say some words in a minute. Prayer together, okay? Ladies of the quilting ministry made these bags and they were hoping to make about 50 of them to send out to Pine Ridge. Well, when women get together, you never know what'll happen. They made over 300 of them. So they did a wonderful job and we thank you quilting ladies for your ministry with us. And we're going to send them out this week to people in need that don't have these things. Okay? So let's bless these bags of support and love for our neighbors to the west. So go ahead, kids. Raise your hands up like this. Maybe out there, go ahead and raise your hands up. We'll bless it all together, okay? And let's bless as we pray. Almighty God, it is your will to bring comfort and help to those in need. Bless these personal hygiene bags that those who receive them will know the power of your love and grace. Bless also your servants, Lord, who have labored in love to create these gifts for our neighbors on the Pine Ridge. Bless the fruits of their labors and the whole work of our church, that together we may minister to your word in the world, in word and deed. In your gracious name we pray, God. Amen. Amen. And I think let's say thank you to our quilting ladies, too. All right. All right. And kids, speaking of offerings, time for noisy offering. You want to grab some buckets and head out into the congregation? And we receive at this time our offering. Start a fire in my 
soul fan the flame and make it grow so there's no doubt or denying let it burn so brightly that everyone around can see that it's you that it's you that we need start a fire in me Please join me now to bless the offering that you have given today. God, we give you our little gifts, and you return with a harvest of blessings, a rain shower of goodness, a lifelong commitment of care. Multiply the things we gather just as you magnify our praise. Amen. Amen. We hear God's voice in the Bible and in preaching, in music and prayer. Listen for God's voice in these readings. The first is found in Jeremiah. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, said the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long? Will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back, those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. In our midst, we stand for this reading from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Renee, for sharing the word with us. Good morning, our saviors. I'm wondering today how many of you are feeling stress. <laughs> I would guess that many of us are, given the, world, given the world in which we live, what with the intensifying effects of climate change and escalating political and social tensions and a pandemic that just keeps going on forever and the pressure of inflation and the ever-growing gap between the haves and the have-nots. And that's just what's out there, some of it at least. Then, of course, there is the weight of all the personal stuff that we carry. A marriage that maybe feels like it might be teetering on the edge. Kids growing up in a world where hope and promise are on decline. A job that feels like a dead end, a diagnosis that hangs like a dark cloud of doom and despair and more. 
The list goes on and on. We've got a lot going on right now, so it's a good thing we've got church to go to, right? (laughs) Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. Well, shoot. (laughs) It looks like it's one of those days in church when we realize that following Jesus is not necessarily easy or comforting. Even so, following Jesus is in fact the hope of this broken world. Those of us who've been following Jesus for some time should not be surprised by Jesus' declaration about fire and division, especially if we've been paying attention to the rest of the story as Luke tells it. Back at the very beginning of the story, when the pregnant Mary visits her relative Elizabeth, Mary breaks out in song and declares what God is up to in and through the one she was carrying in her womb, bringing down the powerful from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, filling the hungry with good things and sending the rich away empty. When John the Baptist broke onto the scene just a couple of chapters later in the story, the message he proclaimed was clear and direct. Repent, he shouted to the crowds. Prepare the way of the Lord. The time of great reversal has arrived. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The crooked will be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth. All flesh is about to see the salvation of God. Then when Jesus started teaching, it became clear pretty quickly that he was all about radical change. He declared early on that God had anointed him to bring good news to whom? To the poor. To proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. In his sermon on the plain, Jesus commanded his listeners to love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. And in a moment that feels to us like he was denying his own family lineage, Jesus said, my mother and my brothers They are those who hear the word of God and do it. Into a world shackled by sin and bound by abuse of power in all of its forms, Jesus came with a message of radical transformation. Through gifts like forgiveness of sins and mercy and love, But the world, divided by values that run counter to God's good pleasure, rejected Jesus and nailed him to a cross. It is no surprise at all that Jesus is at the epicenter of unrest and dis-ease. Some of the stress we feel today is the direct result of our attempts to follow this Jesus who brings radical change. For instance, when we as a church, in the name of Jesus' transformative love, extend welcome to our siblings who identify as LGBTQ+, we are labeled and rejected by those whose worldview prevents them from including all of God's children within God's embrace of grace. 
when we as a church name the evil of white supremacy and call followers of Jesus to renounce it and actively work to establish authentic expressions of community in which all people are afforded the respect and dignity they deserve, we are accused of being politically motivated and threatened with the removal of financial support, transfer of membership, or both. When we as a church preach in the name of Jesus solidarity with the poor and the oppressed and offer a critique of our current economic systems that calls us to consider more seriously the common good, we are criticized for sounding socialist and rejected out of hand. As a church that is desperately trying to follow this Jesus, we know firsthand the stress and the impact of the fire and division about which Jesus spoke. But amid the stress that Jesus himself expressed is also a deep-seated passion for the mission of transformation he was sent to accomplish. You can hear it in his voice that there will be nothing, nothing at all that will stand in his way of initiating the reign of God here on earth, a realm where, where forgiveness and love and radical welcome will rule the day. And it is this very passion that is even now defining who we are as a church and what it is that we are going to be about moving forward. As part of our strategic planning process, our leadership team here at Our Saviors discerned a new vision for ministry that will set the course for everything we will do as a church as we try our level best to follow Jesus in the next three to five years. I wonder if you might repeat this vision with me. By God's grace, and in response to our changing world, we will nurture community and serve those in need. What that vision statement means to me is that we at Our Saviors, in response to this call to follow Jesus, we are aspiring to be a community where everyone finds a place of welcome where everyone is treated with the respect and dignity they deserve as children of God, and where we collectively experience joy in serving other people in need. It's not that we think we've got it all figured out or that we think we're better than anyone else, but it does mean that we're gonna do everything we can to practice the kingdom values that Jesus taught and demonstrated, the very values that bring fire and division, but also hold the promise of transformation, the values of forgiveness of sin, love for the whole of creation, justice for all people, and a cross-shaped servanthood lived out for the sake and well-being of our neighbor. In a world shackled by sin and bound by the abuse of power in all of its forms, our witness as a church, rooted in God's unmitigated grace and Jesus' impassioned ministry, will in fact be the holy and subversive work of a church that will stop at nothing, not even fire and division, to bring about the reign of God here on earth. My friends, there's nothing easy about this. <laughs> and the only comfort in it all is that God, in Jesus Christ, is working out the redemption and transformation of all of creation so that the rule of sin will be broken for good and all will know the life-giving love of the Creator. Our role in this holy work cannot be overstated. 
Walter Brueggemann says it succinctly, the church's business is exactly this, proclaiming the news that God mandates love and welcome for the other. If this is the work to which we have been called, then let the words of that old campfire song be the rallying cry for all who would follow Jesus. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. I don't know if you all rec recognize this person over here. He looks a little different. About uh, four years ago, he started at Augie and he started singing and playing with us and being a part of our band. And then he went to school and got really busy at Augie uh, doing other things. And uh, so freshman year we had him and then sophomore, junior, senior year, he's a little busy. And he just graduated. He's uh, in between um, Augie and med school and he's back. Ted, thanks for coming back and joining us. I'm 
whole church, now we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us pray for the church, the world, and for all people according to their needs. Let us pray. God of love and grace, we pray for your church. We pray for all who dedicate their lives to serving your people. As the ELCA Churchwide Assembly comes to a close, we pray for your spirit to continue leading us forth in our mission. Renew our commitment to our siblings in faith around the globe and bless the work of each and every member of our church that all may experience the warmth and the beauty of your love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of love and grace, we pray for all places affected by natural disaster, especially Kentucky, as they continue to heal from devastating floods, and for other parts of our country that suffer from drought. Bring healing to our world and hope to those in need. Merciful God, God of love and grace, we pray for our country and the nations of this world. Bring an end to the wars and divisions that separate countries and people. Tear down walls of hate and distrust and provide healing that unites for the sake of the common good. Let your spirit of peace fill every heart with hope for a new and better day. Merciful God, God of love and grace, we pray for those in need. Be with those who have been hospitalized and with those who have requested our prayers. Seth Sims, Dennis and Dorothy Gibbs, Lang Chove, Shirley Martins, Darla Nelson, Deanna Haas and family, and the family of Frank Wise as they mourn his death, and with those whom we name in our hearts. Merciful God, God of love and grace, we pray for those baptized here this weekend. Serafina Kosick and Holland and Clary Myrink, wrap them in the warmth of your love and in the promises of your grace. Merciful God, receive our prayers, gracious God, spoken aloud and whispered in our hearts, and hold us forever in your steadfast love, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to come to God's table, we remember that even when we faithfully pray to God and we work diligently to do good and we long for good things, we still might struggle against the weakness in our bodies or the negative thoughts that odor our days or the injustice we cannot forget or the anger that boils our blood. But here we worship a God who forgives all iniquity and heals all disease the one who works vindication and who satisfies with steadfast love. However you struggle today, whatever evil resists your best efforts, this God welcomes you to this table to share a meal of mercy. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to our God. Let us give thanks to our mighty and gracious God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We do remember now that it was on the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all the drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me.
the goodness of God cannot be shaken, the love of God cannot be taken away. Simply come forward and open your hands to receive God's freedom freely offered for you. Come.
Please join me in our Thanksgiving prayer. God, you could choose to bless anyone, but you have brought your promises to us. We have heard your word and shared your feast, and we thank you for these gifts. But do not let us feel too satisfied, for others feel lonely and unwelcome. They wait for someone to speak kindly to them. They long for a friend who will not judge or condemn. They need you just as we do. You already have set a place for them at your table. Now send us to share the invitation. God called you to this place, God fed you in this place, and now God sends you from this place. Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com and like us on Facebook. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.